welcome to another episode of Destination Anywhere. Today we're going to tackle the subject of George Washington's 1776 Midnight Crossing of the Delaware. Now at the time of the crossing, the Continental Army was reeling and needed a victory bad. Without a victory soon, the British would have crushed the revolt and changed American history as we know it. Washington's plan was to launch a pre-dawn attack on the Hessian forces stationed in Trenton. And the plan worked. It started a string of victories known in American history as the Ten Crucial Days. So first off, we're going to head over to the Washington Crossing State Park on the New Jersey side and see where the forces landed. After that, we'll walk over to the PA side and see where they took off from, along with some historic sites over there. So let's go take a look. Located in Hopewell Township, New Jersey, Washington Crossing State Park marks the spot where Washington and his men landed on the New Jersey side of the Delaware. It was here in the middle of the night between December 25th and 26th of 1776 that the Continental Army regrouped after their crossing before starting the nine mile trek to Trenton. From this raised billboard site, you could see straight across the river to the visitor center and monument on the Pennsylvania side. More on that in a minute. Near the landing site is the Johnson Ferry House. This building was likely used by George Washington in the early morning hours after the river crossing while preparing for the march to Trenton. Situated just off the river, the ferry house was a natural selection for Washington and his men. And just a few hundred feet away, the men would start their journey. Okay, right now I'm walking on the Continental Trail. This is the start of it right now. This is about a nine mile stretch that Washington and his men went on as soon as they crossed the river on Christmas of 1776. They would take this trail, split up a little bit and go about nine miles all the way to Trenton and change history. This map shows the route the soldiers took in the early hours of December 26th. After heading inland, then south, they would split up before converging on Trenton. Before the Continental Army could begin their march towards Trenton, they would have to cross the icy Delaware in the middle of the night. By walking this bridge, visitors can cross over Route 29 and make their way to the start of Washington's journey. While the nighttime secret crossing into New Jersey is the famous one, most people don't realize that Washington and his army had actually crossed the Delaware into Pennsylvania just days before. After being pushed out of New York by the British, Washington and his men retreated south through New Jersey and took refuge across the river. With his army dwindling to a few thousand men, Washington knew he needed a bold move if this revolution was going to have a chance. Those dire circumstances are what led him to the idea of an early morning attack on Trenton. Now let's make our way to the other side to see where this maneuver began. Before getting to the PA side, visitors must traverse the Washington Crossing Bridge, built in Washington's honor in 1904. Spanning nearly 900 feet, this steel structure represents the third incarnation here after the first two bridges were washed away by floods in the 1800s. Once across the bridge into Pennsylvania, visitors come to the lower section of what is called Washington Crossing Historic Park. The park, which was created in 1917, features a recently renovated visitor center. Towering over the area is a monument to Washington that was dedicated in 1916. Behind the visitor center features another monument, and before you know it, you're on the water. All right, right now I'm standing along the Delaware, and around here is the spot where Washington would have crossed with all his men. Uh, he would also bring his horses and cannons about 2,400 men, and then they'd get across and start their march to Trenton. From this location, you could see the spot I was standing at earlier in the video on the New Jersey side. The other noteworthy part of the park is the section formerly known as Taylorsville. Most of these buildings were built in the 19th century and bristle of the time period. 
the more modern boat barn houses replica Durham boats like the ones Washington's men used to ferry over the Delaware. The most noteworthy structure in this section is McConkie's Ferry Inn, where it's believed Washington ate the night before the crossing. Built in the 18th century, it was the only building in the village at the time of the Continental Army's stay in the winter of 1776. Just across Route 532 stands a Taylorsville General Store, which opened around 1828 and included the town's post office. Thanks to the volunteers known as the Friends of Washington Crossing Park, the lower section continues to offer guests a timeless glimpse into the past. A few miles up the road, there's more history in the upper section of the park. Visitors are greeted at the entrance by the Thompson Neely House. While the house has seen some changes, this site served as a hospital of sorts during Washington's stay. Sick and injured soldiers were cared for in the home, and besides being a makeshift hospital, the house was also a defense outpost for protecting the banks of the Delaware from British forces. Among the soldiers stationed here were future President James Monroe, as well as Washington's cousin, William Washington. Besides the house, the property also features this mill that was built in the late 1800s by the Neely family. There's even some animals on the property too. With the Thompson Neely house being used as a hospital, it made sense that the grounds would need a burial site. Located between the Delaware Canal and the river is a secluded cemetery for the soldiers that passed during the winter campaign of 1776. The grave site is the final resting place for an unknown number of Washington's men who died due to exposure or illness. The only identified deceased soldier is that of Captain James Moore, who was 24 at the time of his death. The Continental Army's encampment along the Delaware in December of 1776 was one of the most critical in American history. After regrouping, they were able to launch a hugely successful surprise attack on Trenton and spin the momentum in their favor. While ultimate victory for Washington and his men wouldn't come for another five or six years, the seeds planted on this stretch of the Delaware would eventually blossom into freedom. Well that's it for this episode of Destination Anywhere. Join me next time as the war moves into New Jersey and we continue our look at the 10 crucial days in American history.